Agenda-setting theory describes the ability of the news media to influence the importance placed on the topics of the public agenda. With agenda setting being a social science theory, it also attempts to make predictions. That is, if a news item is covered frequently and prominently, the audience will regard the issue as more important. Agenda setting theory was formally developed by Max McCombs and Donald Shaw in a study on the 1968 American presidential election. In the 1968 Chapel Hill study, McCombs and Shaw demonstrated a strong correlation coefficient R greater than 0.9 between what 100 residents of Chapel Hill, North Carolina thought was the most important election issue and what the local and national news media reported was the most important issue. By comparing the salience of issues in news content with the public's perceptions of the most important election issue, McCombs and Shaw were able to determine the degree to which the media determines public opinion. Since the 1968 study, published in a 1972 edition of Public Opinion Quarterly, more than 400 studies have been published on the agenda-setting function of the mass media, and the theory continues to be regarded as relevant. Studies have shown that what the media decides to expose in certain countries correlates with their views on things such as politics, economy and culture. Countries that tend to have more political power are more likely to receive media exposure. Financial resources, technologies, foreign trade and money spent on the military can be some of the main factors that explain coverage inequality. Agenda setting can be traced to the first chapter of Walter Lippmann's 1922 book, Public Opinion. In that chapter, The World Outside and the Pictures in Our Heads, Lippmann argues that the mass media are the principal connection between events in the world and the images in the minds of the public. Without using the term, agenda setting, Walter Lippmann was writing about what we today would call, agenda setting. Following Lippmann, in 1963, Bernard Cohen observed that the press may not be successful much of the time in telling people what to think, but it is stunningly successful in telling its readers what to think about. The world will look different to different people. Cohen continues, depending on the map that is drawn for them by writers, editors, and publishers of the paper they read. As early as the 1960s, Cohen had expressed the idea that later led to formalization of agenda-setting theory by McCombs and Shaw. The stories with the strongest agenda-setting influence tend to be those that involve conflict, terrorism, crime and drug issues within the United States. Those that don't include or involve the United States and politics associate negatively with public opinion. In turn, there is less concern. Although Maxwell McCombs already had some interest in the field, he was exposed to Cohen's work while serving as a faculty member at UCLA, and it was Cohen's work that heavily influenced him, and later Donald Shaw. The concept of agenda setting was launched by McCombs and Shaw during the 1968 presidential election in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. They examined Lippmann's idea of construction of the pictures in our heads by comparing the issues on the media agenda with key issues on the undecided voters' agenda. They found evidence of agenda setting by identifying that salience of the news agenda is highly correlated to that of the voters' agenda. McCombs and Shaw were the first to provide the field of communication with empirical evidence that demonstrated the power of mass media and its influence on the public agenda. The empirical evidence also earned this theory its credibility amongst other social scientific theories. A relatively unknown scholar named G. Ray Funkhauser performed a study highly similar to McCombs and Shaw's around the same time the authors were formalizing the theory. All three scholars, McCombs, Shaw, and Funkhauser, even presented their findings at the same academic conference. 
Funkhauser's article was published later than McCombs and Shaw's, and Funkhauser doesn't receive as much credit as McCombs and Shaw for discovering agenda setting. According to Everett Rogers, there are two main reasons for this. First, Funkhauser didn't formally name the theory. Second, Funkhauser didn't pursue his research much past the initial article. Rogers also suggests that Funkhauser was geographically isolated at Stanford, cut off from interested researchers, whereas McCombs and Shaw had got other people interested in agenda-setting research. Topic. Core assumptions and statements Agenda setting is the creation of public awareness and concern of salient issues by the news media. As well, agenda setting describes the way that media attempts to influence viewers, and establish a hierarchy of news prevalence. Two basic assumptions underlie most researches on agenda setting. The press and the media do not reflect reality, they filter and shape it. Media concentration on a few issues and subjects leads the public to perceive those issues as more important than other issues. These core statements were established by measuring the changes in salience through the use of surveys with the presence of more frequent news coverage. One of the most critical aspects in the concept of an agenda setting role of mass communication is the time frame for this phenomenon. In addition, different media have different agenda setting potential. From the perspective of agenda setting, the analysis of the relationship between traditional media and new virtual spaces has witnessed growing momentum. Topic. Three types of agenda setting The research on the effect of agenda setting compares the salience of issues in news content with the public perceptions of the most important issue, and then analyzes the extent of influence by guidance of the media. There are three models assumed by Max McCombs, the awareness model, the priorities model and the salience model. Most investigations are centered on these three models. In the research, the dependent variables are media agenda, audience agenda and policy agenda as listed in the following part. Rogers and Deering identify three types of agenda setting. Public agenda setting, in which the public's agenda is the dependent variable the traditional hypothesis. Media agenda setting, in which the media's agenda is treated as the dependent variable agenda building. Policy agenda setting, in which elite policy makers' agendas are treated as the dependent variable. Political agenda setting. Mass communication research, Rogers and Deering argue, has focused a great deal on public agenda setting, e.g., McCombs and Shaw, 1972 and media agenda setting, but has largely ignored policy agenda setting, which is studied primarily by political scientists. As such, the authors suggest mass communication scholars pay more attention to how the media and public agendas might influence elite policy makers' agendas i.e., scholars should ask where the president or members of the U.S. Congress get their news from and how this affects their policies. Writing in 2006, Walgrave and Van Aylst took up Rogers and Deering's suggestions, creating a preliminary theory of political agenda setting, which examines factors that might influence elite policy makers' agendas. Topic. Accessibility Agenda setting occurs through a cognitive process known as Accessibility. Accessibility implies that the more frequently and prominently the news media cover an issue, the more instances of that issue become accessible in audiences' memories. When respondents are asked what the most important problem facing the country is, they answer with the most accessible news issue in memory, which is typically the issue the news media focused on the most. 
The agenda setting effect is not the result of receiving one or a few messages but is due to the aggregate impact of a very large number of messages, each of which has a different content but all of which deal with the same general issue. Mass media coverage in general and agenda setting in particular also has a powerful impact on what individuals think that other people are thinking, and hence they tend to allocate more importance to issues that have been extensively covered by mass media. This is also called schemata theory. In psychology and cognitive science, a schema plural schemata or schemas describes a pattern of thought or behavior that organizes categories of information and the relationships among them. <laughs> agenda setting versus agenda building As more scholars published articles on agenda-setting theories it became evident that the process involves not only active role of media organizations, but also participation of the public as well as policymakers. Rogers and Deering described the difference between agenda-setting and agenda-building based on the dominant role of media or public. Thus, setting an agenda refers to the effect of the media agenda on society, transfer of the media agenda to the public agenda, while building an agenda includes some degree of reciprocity between the mass media and society where both media and public agendas influence public policy. According to Sun Young Lee and Daniel Riff, the agenda building theory speculates that the media does not operate within a vacuum. The media agenda in fact is the result of the influences that certain powerful groups exert as a subtle form of social control. Journalists have limited time and limited resources that can contribute to external sources getting involved in the news media's gatekeeping process, and some scholars have attempted to reveal certain relationships between information sources and the agenda the news media has made up, probing who builds the media agenda. There are multiple sources that can participate in this agenda building process through various different ways, but researchers have been the most interested in the effectiveness of information aids such as media kits and press releases within the news media agenda, and this is a measure of the success of organizations' public relations efforts. Berkowitz has implemented a more nuanced analysis of agenda setting and agenda building theories by introducing the terms policy agenda setting and policy agenda building. He argues that when scholars investigate only the linkage between media and policymakers, it is still appropriate to use the notion of policy agenda setting. However, when the focus is placed not only on policymakers' personal agendas, but also on the broader salient issues where media represent only one indicator of public sentiment, Berkowitz suggests talking about policy agenda building. Topic. Research on policymakers and public Topic. Role of policymakers in agenda setting process Some groups have a greater ease of access than others and are thus more likely to get their demands placed on agenda than others. For instance, policymakers have been found to be more influential than the overall group of news sources because they often better understand journalists' needs for reliable and predictable information and their definition of newsworthiness. Cobb and Elder ascribed even more importance to decision makers, claiming that in order for an issue to attain agenda status, it must be supported by at least some of key decision makers as they act as guardians of the formal agenda. They also asserted that certain personages in the media can act as opinion leaders and bring media coverage to a particular issue. Government-affiliated news sources have higher success rates in becoming media agenda and have been found by a number of scholars to be the most frequently appearing of sources at the local, state, and national levels. News sources can also provide definitions of issues, thus determining the terms of future discussion and framing problems in particular ways. 
what interpretation of reality will dominate public discourse has implications for the future of the social problem, for the interest groups and policymakers involved, and for the policy itself. For example, Gusfield argues that the highway deaths associated with alcohol consumption can be interpreted as a problem of irresponsible drunken drivers, insufficient automobile crashworthiness, a transportation system overly dependent on cars, poor highway design, excessive emphasis on drinking in adult social life. Different ways of framing the situation may compete to be accepted as an authoritative version of reality, consequently spurring competition between sources of information for definition of an issue. Very powerful resources of information can even influence whether an issue receives media attention at all. The relationship of media and policymakers is symbiotic and is controlled by shared culture of unofficial set of ground rules as journalists need access to official information and policymakers need media coverage. Nevertheless, the needs of journalists and policymakers are often incompatible because of their different orientation in time as powerful sources are at their best in routine situations and react more slowly when crisis or disaster occur. Consequently, policymakers who understand the rules of this culture the best will be most capable of setting their agendas and issue definitions. On the other hand, media also influence policymakers when government officials and politicians take the amount of media attention given to an issue as an indirect expression of public interest in the issue. Topic. Role of public in agenda-building process The agenda-building perspective ascribes importance not only to mass media and policymakers, but also to social process, to mutually interdependent relation between the concerns generated in social environment and the vitality of governmental process. Thus according to Cobb and Elder, the agenda-building framework makes allowances for continuing mass involvement and broaden the range of recognized influences on the public policy-making process. Although the public does have a place on the list of possibly influencing the media agenda, they are not thought to powerfully shape media agendas. It seems the more correct to argue the possibility that when journalists look to their own interests for story ideas, they are actually trying to predict their audience's needs. This idea of mass involvement has become more prominent with the advent of the Internet and its potential to make everyone a pamphleteer. Increase in the role of citizens in agenda setting sheds light on a new direction in the traditional agenda-building research. This is now the case because the general public can now create their own media. Social media has changed the way people view and perceive things in today's world. Mass involvement within social media lets the general public's voices be heard. Comments and replies give potential for people to address your thoughts or open new doors for conversation. Kim and Lee noted that the agenda-setting research on the Internet differs from traditional agenda-setting research with respect that the Internet is in competition with traditional media and has enormous capacity for contents and users' interactivity. Lee, Lansendorfer and Lee argued that Various opinions about public issues are posted on the Internet Bulletin Boards or the Usenet Newsgroup by netizens, and the opinions then form an agenda in which other netizens can perceive the salient issue. Scholars also stated that the Internet plays role in forming Internet users' opinion as well as the public space. Kim and Lee studied the pattern of the Internet-mediated agenda setting by conducting a case study of 10 cases that have a great ripple effect in Korea for five years from 2000 until 2005. Scholars found that a person's opinion could be disseminated through various online channels and could synthesize public opinion that influences news coverage. Their study suggests reversed agenda effects, meaning that public agenda could set media agenda. Maxwell McCombs also mentioned reverse agenda setting, 
In his recent textbook as a situation where public concern sets the media agenda. According to Kim and Lee, agenda building through the Internet take the following three steps. One, Internet-mediated agenda rippling, an anonymous netizen's opinion spreads to the important agenda in the Internet through online main rippling channels such as blogs, personal homepages, and the Internet bulletin boards. Two, agenda diffusion in the Internet, online news or web sites report the important agenda in the Internet that in turn leads to spreading the agenda to more online publics. 3. Internet-mediated reversed agenda setting, traditional media report online agenda to the public so that the agenda spread to both offline and online publics. However, scholars concluded that the Internet-mediated agenda setting or agenda building processes not always occur in consecutive order. For example, the agenda that was reported by traditional media can come to the fore again through the online discussion or the three steps can occur simultaneously in a short period of time. Several studies provide evidence that the Internet community, particularly bloggers, can push their own agenda into public agenda, then media agenda, and, eventually, into policy agenda. In the most comprehensive study to date, Walston tracked mainstream media coverage and blog discussion of 35 issues during the 2004 presidential campaign. Using time series analysis, Walston found evidence that journalists discuss the issues that bloggers are blogging about. There are also anecdotal pieces of evidence suggesting bloggers exert an influence on the political agenda. For instance, in 2005 Eason Jordan, the chief news executive at CNN, abruptly resigned after being besieged by the online community after saying, according to various witnesses, that he believed the United States military had aimed at journalists in Iraq and killed 12 of them. Similarly, in 2002, Trent Lott had to resign as Senate Majority Leader due to his inappropriate racist remarks that were widely discussed in the blogosphere. However bloggers attract attention not only to oust journalists and politicians. An online investigation on technical problems with electronic voting machines started by an activist Bev Harris in 2003 eventually forced traditional media outlets to address issue of electronic voting malperformance. This in turn made Diebold, a company that produces these machines, to acknowledge its fault and take measures to fix it. Many studies have been performed to test the agenda-setting theory within global news coverage. One of the findings determined that foreign news that had any mentions of the United States or the UK, greatly influenced public opinion compared to global news that didn't involve either country. Topic. Contingency factors Topic. Issue obtrusiveness In an attempt to overcome mirror image effects of agenda setting that implied direct influence of media agenda on the audience, several scholars proposed that the model of agenda setting should include individual, collective audience characteristics or real-world conditions that are likely to affect issue importance. They discovered that certain individual and group characteristics are likely to act as contingent conditions of media impact and proposed a model of audience effects. According to the audience effects model, media coverage interacts with the audience's pre-existing sensitivities to produce changes in issue concerns. Thus, media effects are contingent on issue-specific audience characteristics. For instance, for high sensitivity audiences who are most affected by a certain issue or a problem, the salience of this issue increases substantially with news exposure, while the same exposure has little effect on other groups. 
Erbring, Goldenberg and Miller have also demonstrated that people who do not talk about political issues are more subject to agenda-setting influence because they depend more heavily on media content than those who receive information from other sources, including their colleagues and friends. Another factor that causes variations in the correlation between the media and public agenda is whether an issue is obtrusive or unobtrusive i.e., whether it has a high or low issue threshold. Obtrusive or issues with low threshold are generally the ones that affect nearly everyone and with which we can have some kind of personal experience e.g. citywide crime or increases in gasoline prices. Because of their link to personal concerns, these issues almost compel attention from political elites as well as the news media. Moreover, with this type of issues the problem would be of general concern even without attention from the news media. Unobtrusive or high threshold issues are those issues that are generally remote from just about everyone e.g., high-level wrongdoing, such as the Watergate scandal, plight of Syrian refugees. Research performed by Zucker suggests that an issue is obtrusive if most members of the public have had direct contact with it, and less obtrusive if audience members have not had direct experience. This means that the less direct experience people have with an issue, the greater is the news media's influence on public opinion on that issue. Moreover, unobtrusive or high threshold issues do not pertain into media agenda as quickly as obtrusive issues and therefore require a build up, which is a function of more than the amount of space or time the media devote to the story. The latter may push the story past the threshold of inattention, but it is also important to look at the kind of coverage to explain how a certain incident becomes an issue. Topic. Need for orientation Agenda-setting studies typically show variability in the correlation between media and public agenda. To explain differences in the correlation, McCombs and colleagues created the concept of need for orientation, which describes individual differences in the desire for orienting cues and background information. Two concepts, relevance and uncertainty, define an individual's need for orientation. Relevance suggests that an individual will not seek news media information if an issue is not personally relevant. Hence, if relevance is low, people will feel the need for less orientation. There are many issues in our country that are just not relevant to people, because they do not affect us. Many news organizations attempt to frame issues in a way that attempts to make them relevant to its audiences. This is their way of keeping their viewership, readership high. Level of uncertainty is the second defining condition of need for orientation. Frequently, individuals already have all the information that they desire about a topic. Their degree of uncertainty is low. When issues are of high personal relevance and uncertainty low, the need to monitor any changes in those issues will be present and there will be a moderate the need for orientation. If at any point in time viewers, readers have high relevance and high uncertainty about any type of issue, event, election campaign there was a high need for orientation. David Weaver 1977, adapted the concept of Individuals' need for orientation, defined regarding relevance and uncertainty. Research done by Weaver in 1977 suggested that individuals vary on their need for orientation. Need for orientation is a combination of the individual's interest in the topic and uncertainty about the issue. The higher levels of interest and uncertainty produce higher levels of need for orientation. So the individual would be considerably likely to be influenced by the media stories psychological aspect of theory. Schoenbach and Weaver 1985 focused on need for orientation showed the strongest agenda setting effects at a moderate need for orientation under conditions of low interest and high uncertainty.
Topic: Theory development. Topic: Second level agenda setting, attribute agenda setting. After first-level agenda setting effects were established, researchers began to explore a second level of agenda setting that examines the influence of attribute salience, or the properties, qualities, and characteristics that describe objects or people in the news and the tone of those attributes. The second level of agenda setting was suggested after research confirmed the effects of the theory. As agenda setting theory was being developed, scholars pointed out many attributes that describe the object. Each of the objects on an agenda has a lot of attributes containing cognitive components such as information that describes characteristics of the object, and an affective component including tones positive, negative, neutral of the characteristics on agenda. The agenda setting theory and the second level of agenda setting, framing, are both relevant and similar in demonstrating how society is influenced by media, but they describe a different process of influence. One tells us what information to process and the other tells us how to process that information. Framing theory, an extension of agenda setting, describes how the stance an article of media may take can affect the perception of the viewer. It is said that there are two main attributes of the second level of agenda setting. Those include substantive and affective. The substantive factor has to do mainly with things such as personality and ideology. The affective factor is focused on the positive, negative, and neutral side of things. Topic second level agenda setting versus framing McCombs et al. 1997 demonstrated that agenda setting research at the second level deals with the influence of attribute salience, whereas the first level agenda setting illustrates the influence of issue salience. Balmas and Schieffer 2010 argue that the focus at the first level agenda setting which emphasizes media's role in telling us what to think about is shifted to media's function of telling us how to think about at the second level agenda setting. The second level of agenda setting considers how the agenda of attributes affects public opinion McCombs and Evett, 1995. Furthermore, Ganim 1997 demonstrated that the certain attributes agendas in the news with low psychological distance, drove compelling arguments for the salience of public agenda. The second level agenda setting differs from traditional agenda setting in that it focuses on attribute salience, and public's attribute agenda is regarded as one of the important variables. An example of framing is when a company releases a statement that sounds a lot better than what it actually is. Acting like it the fine print that people don't see. They frame it to sound better and more appealing to the public. This can also take place in crisis management, when companies release a statement to save the company's reputation after a crisis occurred. This was very prominent in the BP oil spill several years ago. One example that helps illustrate the effects of framing involves President Nixon's involvement in the Watergate scandal. According to a study conducted by Lang & Lang, the media coverage at first belittled the Watergate scandal and the president's involvement. It wasn't until the story was framed as one of the highest political scandals in U.S. history that the public opinion changed Lang & Lang, 1981. This event depicts how the media personnel have a great deal of power in persuading the public's opinions. It also suggests that framing is a form of gatekeeping, similar to the agenda setting theory. There is a debate over whether framing theory should be subsumed within agenda setting as second level agenda setting. McCombs, Shaw, Weaver and colleagues generally argue that framing is a part of agenda setting that operates as a second level or secondary effect. Dietram Sheffuel has argued the opposite. 
Scheufel argues that framing and agenda setting possess distinct theoretical boundaries, operate via distinct cognitive processes accessibility versus attribution, and relate to different outcomes perceptions of issue importance versus interpretation of news issue. When talking about the second level of agenda setting, as well as the political aspects of the theory, it's pivotal to include priming. Priming is considered to be the step past agenda setting, and is also referred to as the last step of the process. Priming is primarily used in political settings. It discusses how the media will choose to leave some issues about the candidates out of coverage, while presenting other issues in the forefront. This process creates different standards by which the public evaluates candidates. As well, by reporting the issues that have the most salience on the public, they are not objectively presenting both candidates equally. According to Weaver, framing and second-level agenda setting have the following characteristics, similarities, both are more concerned with how issues or other objects are depicted in the media than with which issues or objects are more or less prominently reported. Both focus on most salient or prominent aspects of themes or descriptions of the objects of interest. Both are concerned with ways of thinking rather than objects of thinking differences. Framing does seem to include a broader range of cognitive processes, moral evaluations, causal reasoning, appeals to principle, and recommendations for treatment of problems, than does second-level agenda setting the salience of attributes of an object. Scheufel and Tewksbury argue that Framing differs significantly from these accessibility-based models i.e., agenda setting and priming. It is based on the assumption that how an issue is characterized in news reports can have an influence on how it is understood by audiences. The difference between whether we think about an issue and how we think about it. Framing and agenda setting differ in their functions in the process of news production, information processing and media effects. News production, although, both frame building and agenda building refer to macroscopic mechanisms that deal with message construction rather than media effects. Frame building is more concerned with the news production process than agenda building. In other words, how forces and groups in society try to shape public discourse about an issue by establishing predominant labels is of far greater interest from a framing perspective than from a traditional agenda setting one. News processing, for framing and agenda setting, different conditions seem to be needed in processing messages to produce respective effects. Framing effect is more concerned with audience attention to news messages, while agenda setting is more concerned with repeated exposure to messages. Locus of effect, agenda setting effects are determined by the ease with which people can retrieve from their memory issues recently covered by mass media, while framing is the extent to which media messages fit ideas or knowledge people have in their knowledge store. Based on these shared characteristics, McCombs and colleagues recently argue that framing effects should be seen as the extension of agenda setting. In other words, according to them, the premise that framing is about selecting a restricted number of thematically related attributes for media representation can be understood as the process of transferring the salience of issue attributes i.e., second-level agenda setting. That is, according to McCombs and colleagues' arguments, framing falls under the umbrella of agenda setting. Topic accessibility agenda setting versus applicability framing according to Price and Tewksbury, however, agenda setting and framing are built on different theoretical premises. Agenda setting is based on accessibility, while framing is concerned with applicability i.e., the relevance between message features and one's stored ideas or knowledge. Accessibility-based explanation of agenda setting is also applied to second-level agenda setting. That is, transferring the salience of issue attributes i.e., second-level agenda setting is a function of accessibility. 
For framing effects, empirical evidence shows that the impact of frames on public perceptions is mainly determined by perceived importance of specific frames rather than by the quickness of retrieving frames. That is, the way framing effects transpires is different from the way second-level agenda setting is supposed to take place i.e., accessibility. On a related note, Scheufel and Tewksbury argues that because accessibility and applicability vary in their functions of media effects, the distinction between accessibility and applicability effects has obvious benefits for understanding and predicting the effects of dynamic information environments. Taken together, it can be concluded that the integration of framing into agenda setting is either impossible because they are based on different theoretical premises or imprudent because merging the two concepts would result in the loss of our capabilities to explain various media effects. A accessibility agenda setting increasing attention has been devoted to examining how agenda setting occur in terms of their psychological mechanisms. Holbrook and Hill, 2005. Price and Tewksbury argued that agenda setting effects are based on the accessibility model of information processing. Accessibility can be defined as how much or how recently a person has been exposed to certain issues. Kim et al., 2002. Specifically, individuals try to make less cognitive effort in forming social judgments, they are more likely to rely on the information that is easily accessible Higgins, 1996. This leads to a greater probability that more accessible information will be used when people make judgments on certain issues Ayaonger and Kinder, 1987, Scheufel and Tewksbury, 2007. The concept of accessibility is the foundation of a memory-based model Schäufel, 2000. It assumes that individuals make judgments on the issues based on information that is easily available and retrievable from their memory Tulving and Watkins, 1975, Hasty and Park, 1986, Iyengar, 1990. Tversky and Kahneman 1974 also argue that the formation of individuals' judgments directly correlates with the ease in which instances or associations could be brought to mind. P. 208. When individuals receive and process information, they develop memory traces that can be easily recalled to make decisions on a certain issue. Agenda setting, in this regard, can make certain issue to be easily accessed in individual's memory when forming judgment about the issue. b. Applicability framing. The idea of framing theory is closely related to the agenda setting theory tradition but it expands more upon the research by focusing on the substance of certain issues at hand rather than on a particular topic. This means that the framing theory's basis is that of the media focuses its attention on certain events and then places them within a field of meaning, is the process of selecting certain aspects of an issue to bring people's attention and to lead them a particular line of interpretation Entman, 1993, Schäufel, 1999. Also, the media's selective uses of certain frames can affect the way the audience thinks about the issue O oh and Kim, 2010. This may sound similar to attribute agenda setting. Both seem to examine which attributes or aspects of an issue are emphasized in the media Kim et al., 2011. Some scholars even argue that framing should be considered as an extension of agenda setting McCombs, 1997. However, framing is based on the applicability model, which is conceptually different from the accessibility model used in agenda setting. According to Goffman 1974, individuals actively classify and interpret their life experiences to make sense of the world around them. These classifications and interpretations then become the individual's pre-existing and long-standing schema. Framing influences how audience thinks about issues, not by making certain aspects more salient than others, but by invoking interpretive cues that correspond to the individual's pre-existing schema Schäufel, 2000. Also, framing is when these interpretive cues correspond with or activate individuals' pre-existing cognitive schema Kim et al., 2002. 
Applicability, in this regard, refers to finding the connection between the message in the media and the framework individuals employ to interpret the issue Scheufel and Tewksbury, 2007. Kim and his colleagues 2002 provide distinction between the applicability and accessibility models as important in terms of issue salience. Framing assumes that each individual will have its own interpretation of an issue, regardless of the salience of an issue. Specifically, it focuses on the terminological or semantic differences of how an issue is described. Agenda setting, on the other hand, assume that only salient issues in the media will become accessible in people's minds when they evaluate or make judgments on the issue. Taken together, the accessibility of issue salience makes the two models of information processing different Schäufel, 2000. Topic. An emotion dimension According to the theory of effective intelligence, emotions enhance citizen rationality. It argues that emotions, particularly negative ones, are crucial in having people pay attention to politics and help shape their political views. Based on that, Renita Coleman and H. Dennis Wu 2010 study whether the TV portrayals of candidates impacts people's political judgment during the 2004 U.S. presidential election. They find that apart from the cognitive assessment, which is commonly studied before, emotion is another critical dimension of the second-level effects in agenda setting. Three conclusions are presented. The media's emotional effective agenda corresponds with the public's emotional impressions of candidates. Negative emotions are more powerful than positive emotions. Agenda setting effects are greater on the audience's emotions than on their cognitive assessments of character traits. Topic: Agenda setting between media and other sources. Recent research on agenda setting digs into the question of who sets the media agenda. Topic power relations between media and other sources Little John and Foss 2011 suggest that there are four types of power relations between media and other sources, high power source and high power media, both are equals in setting the agenda high power source and low power media, the source sets the agenda for the media low power source and high power media, the media set their own agenda and may marginalize the source low power source and low power media, both are too weak to set the public agenda. Topic. Intermedia agenda setting News organizations affect one another's agendas. McCombs and Bell 1996 observe that journalists live in an ambiguous social world, so that they will rely on one another for confirmation and as a source of ideas." Lim 2011 finds that the major news websites in South Korea influence the agendas of online newspapers and also influence each other to some extent. According to McCombs and Funk 2011, intermedia agenda setting is a new path of the future agenda setting research. In addition to social media, popular daily publications such as the New York Times and the Washington Post are agenda setters within the United States media. These publications have a direct effect on local newspapers and television networks that are viewed on a less elite scale. Website networks favor other websites that tend to have a higher viewing and CO. This type of relationship is known as power law which allows the media to have a stronger effect on agenda setting. Furthermore, the birds of a feather argument suggests that because news now exists in a network of connected websites, elite and other types of news media are now more motivated to behave similarly. Topic. Third level agenda setting, network agenda setting model 
The most recent agenda setting studies explore the extent to which the news media can transfer the salience of relationships among a set of elements to the public. That is, researchers assume that the media can not only influence the salience of certain topics in public agenda, but they can also influence how the public relate these topics to one another. Based on that, Guo, Vu and McCombs 2012 bring up a new theoretical model called Network Agenda Setting Model, which they refer to as the Third Level Agenda Setting. This model shows that the news media can bundle sets of objects or attributes and make these bundles of elements salient in the public's mind simultaneously. In other words, elements in people's mind are not linear as traditional approaches indicate, instead, they are interconnected with each other to make a network-like structure in one's mind, and if the news media always mention two elements together, the audience will perceive these two elements as interconnected. Topic. Application Topic. Twitter application Over the last few years, the increase in social media has had a direct effect on political campaigns particularly Twitter. Its unique platform allows users to showcase their political opinion without functioning two directions. It is currently being viewed as a platform for political advancement. Before the use of Twitter, political candidates were using blogs and websites to portray their message and to gain more attention and popularity among their followers. Some of the most followed users on Twitter are past and current presidents of the United States and other political figures. In terms of retweets, politicians and political parties have been labeled influentials on Twitter. Twitter is being used as a resource to gather information, reach a larger audience and engagement, stay up to date with current social and political issues, and to achieve the agenda-building role. Twitter helps express public opinion which in turn allows a relationship to form between the media and the public. Some may argue that Twitter is still being used as a place for people to follow celebrity news and the culture of Hollywood more than it is being used for important issues and world news. Some may also argue that Twitter does not have the ability to set an agenda as much as conventional news outlets. A 2015 study found a positive correlation between issue ranks in news coverage and issue ranks in Twitter feeds, suggesting that Twitter and conventional news outlets by and large reflected each other. The influence of Twitter may not always seem direct and can change during different phases. Topic: Non-political application. McCombs and Shaw originally established agenda setting within the context of a presidential election. Many subsequent studies have looked at agenda setting in the context of an election or in otherwise political contexts. However, more recently scholars have been studying agenda setting in the context of brand community. A brand is defined as what resides in the minds of individuals about a product or service. Brand community is described as a specialized, non-geographically bound community based on a structured set of social relations among admirers of a brand. Under these definitions more than just material products can qualify as a brand, political candidates or even celebrities could be viewed as a brand as well. The theory can also be applied to commercial advertising, business news and corporate reputation, business influence on federal policy, legal systems, trials, roles of social groups, audience control, public opinion, and public relations. Agenda setting in business communication. The central theoretical idea of agenda setting theory fits well in the world of business communication as well as political communication setting. 
In the case of corporate reputations, only the operational definitions of the objects and attributes on these agendas are changed to frame five key theoretical propositions about the influence of news coverage on corporate reputations among the public. This presentation of five basic propositions offers a theoretical roadmap for systematic empirical research into the influence of the mass media on corporate reputations. Agenda setting in advertising. Gorpe demonstrated media's agenda setting can go beyond the transfer of silence to the effect of intended behavior and is thus relevant to advertising. Agenda setting in interpersonal communication. Although agenda setting theory is related to mass communication theory, it can be applied to interpersonal communication as well. Yang and Stone investigated people who prefer to interpersonal communication have the same agenda as others who rely on mass media. According to them, the public agenda suggested by media can flow through interpersonal communication as well. Agenda setting in crime. Agenda setting can be connected to cultivation theory. Lowry et al. conducted a longitudinal study and revealed that network television news covering crimes often made the public not only concentrate on criminal cases but also tremble with fear. Agenda setting in health communication. Ogata Jones, Denham and Springston 2006 studied the mass and interpersonal communication on breast cancer screening practice and found that mass media is essential in setting an agenda for proactive health behaviors. Women who were directly or indirectly exposed to news articles about breast cancer tended to conduct more frequent screenings than those hadn't read such articles. Outside U.S. Europe, agenda setting theory is applicable to other countries as well. In Europe, agenda setting theory has been applied in similar pattern as in the United States. McCombs and Maxwell also investigated agenda setting theory in the context of the 1995 regional and municipal elections in Spain. China, Goli Ang, Xiao and Bowman examined that agenda-setting effect in China is not as strong as in the Western world. They provided empirical evidences in political and media structure in China. <laughs> <laughs> Contributions Since the Chapel Hill study, a great deal of research has been carried out to discover the agenda-setting influence of the news media. The theory has not been limited to elections, and many scholars constantly explored the agenda-setting effect in a variety of communication situations. This explains that agenda setting has a theoretical value which is able to synthesize social phenomena and to build new research questions. Another contribution of agenda setting is to show the power of media. Since the study of 1940 presidential election in Erie County, Ohio, by Paul Lazarsfeld and his colleagues, little evidence of mass communication effects was found over the next 20 years. In 1960, Joseph Clapper's effects of mass communication also declared the limited effect of media. Agenda setting caused a paradigm shift in the study of media effects from persuading to informing by its connection of media content and its effects on the public. Topic: Future. Topic: Advent of the internet. The advent of the Internet and social networks give rise to a variety of opinions concerning agenda-setting effects online. Some have claimed that the power of traditional media has been weakened. Others think that the agenda-setting process and its role have continued on the Internet, specifically in electronic bulletin boards. 
With the presence of rapid mass communication, like social media, the agenda-setting theory is both supported and challenged to evolve. Some suggest that social media and traditional media in political campaigns will integrate. Social media is the next step of agenda setting because now popular Twitter handles can now choose what they want their followers to see. While some theorize that the rise of social media will bring a downfall to journalists' ability to set the agenda, there is considerable scholarship to counterbalance this form of thinking. People can also choose which accounts they want to follow on any social media platform. This has changed the way in which agenda setting is going and will continue to change throughout the evolution of technology and different media platforms. One example that provides realistic criticism for this theory was the use of Twitter by reporters during the 2012 presidential election and the role that two-way communication models now exist within the news media discourse. Traditional media such as newspapers and broadcast television are vertical media, in which authority, power and influence come from the top and flow down to the public. Nowadays vertical media is undergoing rapid decline with the growing of horizontal media. New media enables everyone to become a source of information and influence, which means the media is distributed horizontally instead of top-down. <inaudible> Agenda melding Another change of agenda-setting theory is known as agenda melding, which focuses on the personal agendas of individuals vis-a-vis -vis their community and group affiliations. This means that individuals join groups and blend their agendas with the agendas of the group. Then groups and communities represent a collected agenda of issues, and one joins a group by adopting an agenda. On the other hand, agenda setting defines groups as collections of people based on some shared values, attitudes, or opinions that individuals join. This is different from traditional agenda setting because according to Shaw et al., individuals join groups in order to avoid social dissonance and isolation that is also known as need for orientation. Therefore, in the past in order to belong people would learn and adopt the agenda of the group. Now with the ease of access to media, people form their own agendas and then find groups that have similar agendas that they agree with. The advances in technology have made agenda melding easy for people to develop because there is a wide range of groups and individual agendas. The Internet makes it possible for people all around the globe to find others with similar agendas and collaborate with them. In the past agenda setting was limited to general topics and it was geographically bound because travel was limited. Topic. Critique Various critiques have been made of agenda setting theory. Agenda setting is an inherently causal theory, but few studies establish the hypothesized temporal order the media should set the public's agenda. The measurement of the dependent variable was originally conceptualized as the public's perceived issue. Salience but subsequent studies have conceptualized the dependent variable as awareness, attention, or concern, leading to differing outcomes. Studies tend to aggregate media content categories and public responses into very broad categories, resulting in inflated correlation coefficients. The theory seemed to imply that the audience takes generally passive position. However, the public is not as passive as the theory assumed. Theorist John Fisk has challenged the view of a passive audience. <laughs> See also